So here's this uh, keycap, and that's an imported piece of geometry. Timeline is turned on, and uh, we want to remove well, we want to remove these uh, roundings here that look like fillets, but they really aren't fillets. This is a fillet, right? This is a separate surface patch that I could uh, remove by just selecting it when I'm in the uh, solid environment and hit delete, and that gives me that edge back. Uh, I came to that here because it's not a separate surface patch. This is one contiguous surface that has a seam here, it just wraps around completely. And uh, not the best surface to begin with. If we take a look at the curvature map analysis, that looks uh, pretty much like garbage. So the person who modeled this didn't really know what they were doing. But anyway, <clears throat> so what we can do is we go into the surface tab and we we'll take this uh, apart into individual surfaces. I'm going to unstitch this and by default same chain selection is enabled. I have disabled that. I'm going to select this surface and this surface and the bottom surface. Uh, the bottom surface because I want to get rid of these little fillets. And uh, I can't just uh, select the fillet. I cannot go into the solid tab and select this and hit delete because it's attached to this, uh, you know, to this solid body. So it can't fix it. I can't just remove it and make a sharp edge of it because then we had, we'd have a little like a triangular surface here. Um, so it can't do that. So we go into the surface workspace and select these three surfaces. And if we now go into our bodies folder, we have uh, individual surface bodies and not a solid body, which is what we had before. And I want to hide this one and I only need those three for the moment. So then I'm going to use the untrim command. I'm going to untrim that surface and get back the original edges. I'm going to untrim that surface to get back those original edges. And then I'm going to untrim that surface and to get those sharp corners back. So while I'm at it, I'm going to uh, measure the distance between here and here, and that's one millimeter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a uh, extrusion of minus one millimeter and uh, select this and hit the V key to hide it for a moment. And then I'm going to stitch that together. And I usually lower my stitch tolerance to one hundredths. If I see a gap, um, showing up here, I, I figure out what the problem is, but I don't just um, increase that uh, tolerance. So um, what we can see now is that uh, that is that surface usually is open and was closed previously. Um, and also we have still have that original edge band here. So we can just select this and uh, that's one body. So we have to, actually we don't. I'll just select this surface by surface, then delete it because we don't need those anymore. And hit the delete key and they're gone. So, and um, we don't need that anymore either, but we, I can just hit it like this and hit the delete key. And that gives me another delete feature down here. So I need that for reference and I need this. And what I need to do now, I use the trim command and select this as my trimming body and the, select this here as the face to be removed. That leaves me with this little circle here, and I can just select that face and delete it. And then I can stitch that back together. Oh, stitch that back together. And OK, so now we have three bodies left here. I'm going to hide that for a moment. 
I'm going to unhide this. So what I'm going to try to do now is I need a I need a construction plane that I can actually sketch on. And how do I get this? Um, it looks like if I go into the side view, that is a flat plane at a specific angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. And then I'm going to use the create uh, project include intersect and intersect that that edge and that gives me those pierce points where that edge pierces through the plane so then I make a line key L between those two points and finish the sketch and then I'm going to create a plane at angle on that line And then I'm going to create, um, and I don't need that sketch anymore. I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to project that edge into that sketch. So now I don't need to see my bodies for a moment. And I'm going to hit the X key, my selected hit the X key to make that a construction line. So I'm going to create a few more construction lines from actually escape that line L for line, L key for line. And I make a line here and a line here. And then I make those coincident with the sketch point. And those can also be construction lines. So and then I make a sketch rectangle and make those lines coincident with that point, that point, that point, and that point. So now I have a loft profile or a sketch that I can use as a loft profile. Let me turn the bodies back on. So I'm going to create a loft, a surface loft between this uh, profile down here, and this profile up here. So what you can see now is that uh, this is connected here, but there's a sharp angle. It doesn't curve. So how do I get this to curve? So this is profile one. So I want that tangent. So I'm going to do, I'm going to unhide that initial body and play with a tangency weight and see how my surfaces responds to that. So you can see that other surface here sort of showing through. And that looks pretty okay, very close to the original surface. And I think I leave it at that. So this is not exactly the original surface because that wasn't good anyway. And um, I'm going to hide that original surface and I don't need to see that sketch anymore. So now I have my top surface here, but I can see that my loft isn't tall enough. It doesn't intersect this uh, surface that defines the top of the key. So what I'm going to do, I use the extend command and um, hide that keycap. Use the extend command, and these four edges, and I believe the default is natural and I'll just extend it by one millimeter. That should be plenty. I'm going to unhide that. And now I'm going to use the trim command. And I use that as the trimming tool and the trim command is a little iffy sometimes. So you have to have that surface visible to select it. And then you click OK and it trims that out. And I use that trim command again and use that as the trimming tool. And that's what I'm trimming off. And now I have a key, a sharp edged key. So I can now go ahead and stitch that together again. And watch what happens with these bodies here. 
the stitch into a solid body. This one we don't need anymore, we can remove it. So that leaves us with a solid body keycap with sharp edges that we can now fill it. So what we could do here, I hit the F key for fill it, and I select for example this edge, but the default is a constant fillet, and we don't want a constant fillet in this case, we want a variable fillet. So maybe at the top here, we get that maybe two millimeters, and at the bottom maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and you can play with that. Actually, I can open that fillet command again and just add another fillet that will also be a variable fillet. Um, 0.5 and 2. And now we can actually go ahead and uh, create a mirror. And instead of you can fill it, you can fill it a feature down here. You have several options. Uh, filleting that as a feature doesn't work, but filleting these faces, uh, sorry, mirroring these faces, that works. And I click on this face and hold my mouse down. So now I can select it. And Fusion thinks for a moment, and it doesn't do it. Hmm. Okay, that worked earlier, but never mind. Let's just go ahead and uh, add more fillets to it, 2 and 0.5, oops, and do the same here, 2 and 0.5. And then you can give it one more fillet around the top edge. Now, again, the default is constant, but in this case, because the angles between these faces are varying, a constant fillet wouldn't look very good. So I would choose a short fillet, maybe give that a one, and that gives it a very nice and even looking fillet all the way around. So there's your keycap. Hopefully this helps.